so I'm thrilled you're here. Ladies, you know, I've mentioned uh, Wendy uh, Coulter is a medical intuitive. She has written an incredible book called The Essentials of Medical Intuition, A Visionary Path to Wellness. And Wendy, you're also the founder of The Practical Path, which would you like to, first of all, Wendy, will you tell us a little bit about medical intuition? What is that? Sure, sure. Uh, well, thank you for having me. It's lovely to see all of you. And I'm happy to answer any questions about medical intuition you might have. Uh, medical intuition has been around for in recorded history for over 200 years, believe it or not. Uh, and what it is, is an intuitive skill set that is designed to uh, scan or intuitively assess the physical body, as well as the biofield, the chakra system, the auric field. Uh, for physical imbalances, as well as mental, emotional, or spiritual imbalances in energy. And how this works for qualified medical intuitives is that we actually look at your physical body. So we look at it very similarly to an MRI. Some look, see it as sort of an x-ray kind of an image. Some is in color. Some is very specific. Uh, we can look down to the cellular level. And it's an extended conversation, intuitive conversation between the practitioner and the, the body and energy field of the client. So it's a remote skill. Uh, sometimes you're with the medical intuitive, sometimes you're not. And that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. So, so what gave, I mean, how would you have known that this was a skill or a gift that you had, you know, when you were younger or were you drawn to it or had you the ability to see energy in people always? How did this how did this come about for you? Yeah, it's a great question. Everybody has a different answer to that question. You ask five intuitives, you'll get five different answers. And uh, for me, I was always an intuitive child. And I think many children are. Um, and in the US, maybe not in Ireland so much, but in the US, it's definitely not encouraged. <laughs> Uh, you know, you, you parents generally don't encourage that kind of behavior. But mine didn't, you know, mine, mine didn't squash me on it, which was nice. Uh, and it was sort of a creative pursuit of mine. And I just noticed I could do it. As I got older, uh, I became an energy healing practitioner. And I used a skill uh, for energy healing through my hands. And some of you might be familiar with that kind of thing, like Reiki and healing touch here in the States and other things that you might be aware of. Um, and I noticed that as I was doing my healing work, I could see into my clients' bodies, and I could also see the life history that uh, could have led to this health imbalance. It was just kind of came naturally. I developed my intuitive skill over the years, you know, various classes and programs, and I taught intuitive development for quite a while. But um, I noticed that uh, when I was doing my healing work, that sometimes people would come back again and again for another session where they have not been able to let something go. Something wouldn't heal properly. Uh, they would feel, you know, that they really didn't have the opportunity to let it go. And so I started doing these visual assessments, intuitive visual assessments. My eyes are closed. I'm not looking physically. And asking, querying the body, what's holding, what's keeping this issue in place? Why is it staying? Why is it sticky? And that information was massive. I mean, I would just get more and more information, the more questions I asked. Uh, and I would tell my client what I was seeing. Now that I noticed really made a difference. And in the book that I wrote, I call it permission for wellness. Where's our permission level for wellness in any given situation? And for most of us, the, it's the information that can be missing. What does the body want you to know? what's its perspective once they receive that I noticed when I went to do a healing with them they were letting go of things permanently and we've noticed this over the years with medical intuition that it is such a powerful foundational process to any healing any healing modality including conventional medicine that when people are able to hear what their body wants them to know, they start to release the, the things that hold imbalances in place. It's fascinating. That was the long answer. <laughs> oh, I love that answer because you gave us so much information in there. But what you're really saying is that it really comes first because what the body is trying to tell you is, is hugely important. So are you saying that the body has a kind of consciousness of its own? 
Oh, without question, wow. without question. If you've read the work work of a gentleman named Bruce Lipton, uh, he's a scientist and a and a medical doctor, I think. Uh, he writes all about the consciousness of the cells, uh, which I believe is completely accurate. And in my work, you know, I'm having a talk with your kidneys. I'm going to discuss things with your liver, you know, <laughs> your digestive system, or whatever, uh, because there's so much rich information that the body holds on to its stores, and uh, understanding that is, is key. So can I ask you something? I, I mean, firstly, yes, here in this group, we have an, the, the sort of general communities of what we call wise and ageless goddesses. So we're women who have moved through the, or moving through the midlife transition. Very often, I think at this point, that sort of whole area of the kind of midlife upgrade, uh, Dr. Luanne Briesendeen calls it the upgrade, um, brings that kind of gift of a heightened intuitive sense which is, I, I feel that that's something that, that is one of the reasons why so many of the, the group here have moved from, you know, their, their regular profession that they've done over a number of years and have been, had a kind of move into the healing um, modalities and, and quite a number of them. But I also think that there are people who are called to a job, it doesn't necessarily have to be within the healing professions or the healthcare area, such as hair salon. I mean, my hairdresser, I know, is a healer. I mean, there's no doubt about it. She's never studied it in any way, but there is nobody who goes into her salon who doesn't leave with a kind of change in their energy. Do you think that that's the kind of person who may have the ability to, um, who maybe unconsciously having conversations with people's bodies, basically, or, or people's, con you know, within them in some way? Well, I think we all have the ability. I don't think it's a gift for one person or another person. I, I think it's actually inherent in human nature. We're born with intuition. We're born with an imagination. We're born with an ability to uh, use our our minds in this way. It's it's not it's a it's a misconception about intuitive skill sets. Everyone's intuitive, whether or not they're encouraged to use it or they even know how is another story. That's education. Right. Well, that's what you're doing now as well. And you have done something incredible. You have managed to get the sort of whole institution of medicine to pay attention to you. You have students who are medical students learning. Oh, yeah. You have to teach them. How did you, I mean, you really are kind of frontiers woman um, in this area, aren't you? That you've broken into that, which, which would have been a, a very tough wall to break, I'd say, through the years. Oh, it has been. And I've had some very wonderful supporters in conventional healthcare who are also themselves frontiers people <laughs> um, who want to see these skill sets <clears throat> uh, get developed. Actually, I'll be honest with you, the people that have been the strongest supporters have been the medical doctors who have worked with medical intuitives because they in their own practices see the value, the immense value and the changes within their own patients when uh, they've worked with a medical intuitive on tough cases and things like that. And this is like the hidden, you know, the, the little secret of medical intuition. Medical intuitives have been approached by medical doctors for like generations and nobody talks about it. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're bringing this to the, the fore. Um, and so I've been very lucky and I've, I've been lecturing at some of the top medical uh, universities in the United States. It's been very gratifying. That is amazing. Have you, you've also done an incredible study of research, haven't you? Rather large study. How did that, how did that come about? Well, it came about because there was very little research on medical intuition out there. So I, I started my program for medical healthcare providers. They don't all have to be in conventional medicine, of course, uh, but healthcare providers, because I saw the gap in healthcare where this skill set could be of such enormous value and it really resonated. Um, oh gosh, Trina, I've, I lost your thread. Well, the question I, was? The question was... Uh... Oh, yes, how you oh, the research. Yes, yes. Yeah. So when I when I started writing my book, I looked into what kind of research was out there. And uh, even though there's research dating back to the 1800s, believe it or not, um, there was really nothing that I could see in modern 
contemporary research that really nailed it. And that's partly because studying intuition is a real slippery beast, right? You can imagine, because how do you empirically test intuition? <laughs> now, there's plenty of ways to do that, and people are have tried it but medical intuition is a is been challenging for studies apparently There's a handful i would say over the last 30 years um in the nursing sector there's a lot there's there's over 30 years of study in the nursing sector on how nurses use intuition it's brilliant but it's not specifically the skill set of medical intuition in the way it's classically used um so i decided i would do a study <laughs> I just said, let's do a study. Um, and where I wanted to study my graduates because they were clearly receiving high marks from their pra in their um, practicum hours. We got we get we gather feedback and we're like, these people are knocking it out of the park. So can we study this? We could. And what we did was we put together uh, five of the graduates and about a little over uh, 67 people from the community in San Diego and Los Angeles uh, through the UCSD Medical Center, through uh, Scripps um, Cardiac Treatment Center, and for people from the community who wanted to participate. And we found that they, they would rate, the study was they would subjectively rate the medical intuitives after a typical session. Uh, we wanted to see how this works. And we received 94% accuracy level in the medical intuitive's ability to locate and assess the primary health issue. And remember, we don't do any pre, no intake, no health records, none of that. We just sit down, we do our process, and we say what we see. And that was a phenomenal result. 94% accuracy in location and assessment of primary health issue is, you know, the doctors went, we don't get that. <laughs> um, secondly, we had a 98% success rate in uh, locating and describing the life experience of the of the, the subject, the participant, in terms of how the life experience related to the health issue. Goodness. That's where the emotions, mental, spiritual, life history comes in. And they really related to it. 98% accuracy was wonderful to see. Um, we also asked how consistent was the medical intuitive with a known diagnosis? Because some of these people came from the medical center. They knew their diagnosis. We didn't ask them. And of that group, it was about half of those participants knew their diagnosis. They said the medical intuitive was 94% consistent in their description with that specific diagnosis. And there was much more data besides, which I wrote about in the book, and it's on uh, the National Institutes of Health uh, website as a published research study through a very um, prestigious medical journal here in the U.S. called Journal of Integrative and Complementary Medicine. They picked it up. They were interested. And this is why we see the medical world being interested in this, because it needs to be brought forward as a skill set or a tool set, you could say, that can be used in healthcare, particularly in cases that are challenging. And there's so many now. Here we have long COVID, which has, you know, been happening for the last few years. What about that? What about Lyme disease? What about fibromyalgia? What about these issues that are challenging for conventional medicine to deal with? This is medical intuition. It's our wheelhouse. And, and and a study such as yours done in that way has to also get the attention of, of the established um, medical um, arena. Can I ask you something, though? What would happen if the medical intuitives were to find a different diagnosis? And, and how does a patient go back to their... their... <laughs> Surely that's a difficult thing to do. You know, and somebody's got, you know, uh, one condition and in actual fact, it's something else entirely different. Has that happened a lot? Is that something that... <laughs> First? Yeah, just a little. Yes. Um, so, so medical intuitives, unless they are diagnosticians themselves, they're MDs or you know nurse practitioners or some field that can actually diagnose. I, I'm not. I don't come from that background. I, most medical intuitives, I would say, probably don't come from that medical background. So we cannot actually literally diagnose. But what we can't, because that's would be out of scope of practice and illegal essentially in the U.S. So, but what we can do is we can describe something and describe the connections in the body and 
uh, ask very, very specific questions of the body and the biofield to say, what is this exactly? How can this client take this information to their doctors so their doctors can diagnose it correctly? That's the main job because so much, you know, medical error is in the U.S. anyways, the third leading cause of death after cancer and heart disease. Medical error, what does that mean? Well, in many cases, it means misdiagnosis or missed diagnoses and a number of other things that medical intuition is really uniquely equipped to review and assess. And so we found wonderful. I mean, this is the feedback I received from my clients and many medical intuitives do. You know, that information you gave me, I took it to my doctor and they went a different direction and now we've got some results. And, you know, that's ideal. Absolutely. And so, uh, but the other interesting area of it is this, I think, and that is, in fact, a conversation we had before you you, you joined us, Wendy, um, had to do with, you know, oftentimes what we are suffering with, whether it's mental or physical or emotional or spiritual or whatever, may well go back in time to a point when we really weren't even able to articulate um, for ourselves. And so we would ignore it or not know of that. Um, so that's one area, you know, that, that whatever occurred within us happened so young that we can't uh, see that for ourselves or indeed an area where someone can't speak for themselves, such as someone with dementia, with, with a, a, you know, in pain or, or in some way suffering. Can, does a medical intuitive um, come across that a lot? Oh, goodness, yes, absolutely. Uh, one of my grads is doing work with autistic children, and uh, it's phenomenal the work she's doing. I mean, I hope she's writing a book about it because uh, it, it, she's documenting everything. And um, it's this is again, when you think about the uses of medical intuition, there's really nothing we can't conceivably look at and review and assess. Um, and that goes for people with who are incapacitated in some way, you know, children, animals, even um, that can't speak it. Um, yeah, there's just so much use for this. It's it kind of it goes pretty deep. It's well, do you know, I actually when I heard you and, and I've told others that I loved your interview with Regina Meredith and, and I've, I've since seen you on, on a number of others. Um, and I thought it was really, really interesting. But in actual fact, the more I hear you speak. I actually find it huge. I think it's awesome what you do. And I think that, you know, if, if this begins to become more mainstream, that, that more and more people get involved and inquire about it and hear you and, and other people talking about it, I think it will change the whole course of medicine. I mean, it's that's just me. And I don't know the first thing about medicine, I have to say. Um, do you mind if I ask any of the members here if they'd like to actually, there are many who are, you know, come from a background of medicine and others. Have you I mean, are you as awestruck about this as I am? <laughs> yes, I am, Trina. I'm absolutely fascinated. Yes. Um, may I ask, when do you talk about when you're communicating with organs in the body? How May I ask you how you communicate? You talked about your procedure that you do. Are you working in the energy field at the chakras or um, overall in the body and I presume you don't mean that you're physically speaking to the organs. So what is your communication method? Uh, so it's intuitive. And my method, it might be different than another medical intuitives. My method is in visual intuition. So I use, you know, mind's eye type of intuition. And the reason I do that is because I want to see the body. <laughs> I actually want to see the anatomy and the physiology, how things are working. And so that's what I have done for years. And that's was sort of my natural bent. But also that's how I teach. Uh, because if you can, and there's many ways to use intuition, and many of you might be familiar. There's hearing intuition, there's knowing intuition, there's feeling intuition. I like seeing intuition specifically because I want to see what's going on so I can describe it. Right. And so who am I? What am I working with? Well, I'm working with the biofield for sure, but really, really specifically the anatomy, the physiology, uh, the workings. It's, you know, I, I describe it as an MRI because that's sort of a people can get a sense of what that means, but it really doesn't look like that. It's in color. It's very specific. It's down to the cell. Um, and it's, it's just fascinating. It's always interesting to look at. 
Can I ask you as well, when you do discover something wrong, are you always working with a physician that you would refer the patient or that, that you would work with uh, who would recommend treatment? Or do you advise the patient or the client on treatment yourself from, from your own experience? Yeah, so this is where ethics have to come in when it comes to medical intuition. It's a great question. I really appreciate that. Ethically, uh, I am not a medical professional, so I can't practice medicine. I'm not licensed to. So what my job is to describe what I see in such a way that empowers the client to get the help that they need, right? Or that their body is asking for. That's more accurate. And there, there's an art to that. There's a practice to that. But it's critical. My job is to help my clients find a path to wellness, whatever that wellness is, whatever that health and healing is for them and their bodies. And now I have to be careful not to um, harm someone, right? And because, you know, words can be intense. So when I see something that looks like, um, and actually, Trina, you touched on this earlier, and I didn't get into it. When we talk about life history, there's two areas. One is the physiology and the anatomy of the body and what you see. The other one is the life history and how a trajectory could have taken place to manifest in an imbalance. Now, that's an interesting conversation. Um, and there's a lot of research on early life trauma leading to later life health imbalances, if you're aware of that. It's called adverse childhood experiences. Medical intuitives have seen this forever. So we have to be we have to be careful about how we language things, but we also want to make sure that we're languaging something for the client, that they're hearing it, they're receiving it in some way that they can use, right? So it's not fortune telling and it's not, you know, a psychic reading, you know, like you would go to your neighborhood psychic. It's very specific about the health and wellness of the physical body, the mind, the emotions and the spirit. So I'm not sure I answered your question thoroughly, Gail, but <laughs> I hope that helped. No, it does. It does. It's fascinating. Yet yeah, really does. <laughs> it's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I wish we had more of you here. <laughs> In our well, we need I work you badly. <laughs> Well, you know, I work with a lot of people overseas. It's it's a remote skill. So I have people who call me from all over the world and my my students as well. We can do this on Zoom. We can do it by phone. Uh, there's just no no limitation in that regard. And I teach people from all over the world as well. They come to the classes on Zoom. Is this through your practic practical path pro pro that, yeah. that you founded? Um, so we've got your book, which is The Essentials of Medical Intuition, A Visionary Path to Wellness. And we have your Practical Path uh, website, which has lots of your fabulous blogs in there. You have lots of advice and case studies and, and ideas for people to follow. Um, and you have two courses as well available. So you just mentioned one that you do via Zoom to people all over the world. And then this one, because there's this lovely line you have, you know, who heal the healers. So there's one that people can do for themselves. And I'm fascinated in this. You talk about uh, energy hygiene um, and, and how to take care and set boundaries and, and maintain a healthy uh, energetic field of our own. Um, and I'm sure there, and this is something that I've discovered so often that people who work with other people, whether it's in the services, the caring services, the healthcare and, and other areas, social services, they very often have a lot of pain in their own body. They, you know, such as rheumatism, fibromyalgia, um, a number of things, we, we've members who have had long COVID who have spent a lot of time taking care at the you know the front line uh, during COVID themselves um, and so this is a really interesting area so can you tell us a little bit about energy hygiene I'd, I'd love to it's a passion of mine to teach anybody who wants to learn about energy hygiene and I, I started this course it's called medical intuition for healing and self-care and that is open to everyone uh, that is uh, a course I've taught in person I've taught at Andrew Weil Center and other uh, centers of uh, healthcare and education, but I'm now creating a self-study program. So anyone can take it at any time. And we hope to launch that very soon. Uh, if you go on the website, there's a page for it. You can get on the waiting list with a good discount. <laughs> um, but what I'm teaching there, among other things, is, um, and the basics of this uh, energy hygiene skills are for everyone to learn how to manage their energy, uh, meaning, yeah. 
what is grounding? What is what is that meaning of an energy boundary? What are you talking about there? You know, how does that work? What about how can I let go of something that I don't want in my energy? And we carry so much energy around. And I began this course on the demand of nurses uh, down at Scripps uh, Healthcare, where I was teaching, um, that wanted something they could use on the fly. So not as a formal session, but something they could use for themselves when they were working in the hospitals. They would come home like a, a squashed grape. You know, they would just burn out. They were exhausted. And they wanted something they could do every day and every at, a, at their choosing to just clean and, and reset their energy all the time. So these are the, the crux of it is three basic skills. Uh, one is a grounding technique. One is the buffering, essentially a boundary technique. And another one is a releasing technique. And you can do these all day long. <laughs> uh, and they really help. So that's one of the things that I teach. The other thing I teach in this particular course is how to start that dialogue with your own body. So you can learn how to do this for yourself. So if you have a bad back, what does that bad back want you to know? What are those vertebrae? What are those discs? You know, what are those muscles? What what are they holding on to? And what do they want you to know about it so that you can start to find some healing in those areas? And so you can learn how to listen and, and interact with your body as well. And that's what I do. So I think everybody should learn how to do that too. <laughs> I completely agree with you. And I wonder, I mean, you're, you're speaking to, uh, you know, the converted here, Wendy, but what if you know somebody, what if you love somebody who uh, isn't open to uh, exploring this? And yet we know for an absolute fact that it would be something that would bring them uh, a lot of, you know, easing of their distress. I mean, there are people with, with, with partners with very serious injuries or, you know, um, uh, conditions and that kind of thing who would absolutely say I'm not doing any of that you know sort of uh, stuff the woo-woo stuff or whatever else how I mean can 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 others do it for them could we oh sure for them can we help oh I see what you're asking yes how do we um, well again you know it can cross an ethical line <laughs> Okay. Uh, we don't want to look into the energy of anyone unless, uh, you know, or, or access it without their permission. That's, that's really the bottom line with any energy practice and or energy based practice. However, I will say that the skepticism doesn't bother me one bit. I've taught skeptics <laughs> many <clears throat> because, you know, they, especially medical doctors, I mean, talk about skeptical, you know, but I, they, they come and they want to learn about this. And when they start to practice these very simple techniques, <clears throat> they see the difference in their own experience of life. And, and, you know, that's why I say start slowly. Actually, on my website, there is a free guided meditations tab <laughs> that uh, the workshop kind of takes this to the next level. But if you just want to stick your toe in the water, uh, many of my students and my clients recommend these to their <clears throat> loved ones as well. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, I'm delighted to hear that. Yes. Yeah. And these are they're called energy essentials. They're five minute audios and you just practice along with and see how it goes. And so there's some basic energy hygiene, fundamental energy hygiene skills there you can listen to right now and see how they work for you. And in the workshop, we go further with it, uh, but just they're free for everyone. I'm putting that in just here because I think there'll be a few people looking to, to check that out. Practical path, P-A-T-H. Just look up the practical path, people, and you will find that. Yeah, well, you will come to that. Wendy, I think that when people come to you, something is already spoken to them opens up that path there's already something opening up before they even get to you or or any of your graduates or whatever else um so uh, i imagine that that's the kind of uh, timing for someone that is right so in other words what i'm really saying is that our healing doesn't occur before we're ready for it um i imagine and so by the time people get to you whatever it is that that you have to uh show them that they're or trans what would we say translate for them from, from the, their body or communicate from their body to them that that is something that they are absolutely ready for and they're they're going to begin that path of of healing um have you what's the most spectacular thing and i'm really sorry to put you on the on the spot here you know has there been something absolutely astounding in your in your head that you've seen 
a case study that you yeah absolutely i'm happy to share a case study I, I can share a number of them but let me let me share one that i've got two to pick from hmm <laughs> um i'll sh i'll share out both of them <laughs> well, i'll start with one that <clears throat> really outlines the process as i practice it and then I'll, I'll share with you the one that really changed my whole perspective on medical intuition. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I've got a... No, you take your time. Hold on a second. That's okay. I've popped that in the, uh, the practical path if anybody wants to go check that out. And also Wendy has a Facebook page, which has lots of things on that as well. And that's the practical path. So check that out for yourselves if you want to find out some more things about Wendy yourselves. Thank you. Um, these both of these are in the book. And I do talk about these because I think they're very good examples of how I practice medical intuition. And this was uh, a case of a, a client of mine, who a very successful businesswoman in her 40s. And what she had wasn't a life and death situation. What she had was a case of tendonitis in her wrist that was persistent and it wasn't going away, just nothing where it was working. And we know tendonitis can take a long time to heal, but she wanted me to look at it. And I said, sure. So um, I'll explain the process as I explain the case. So in, she had this for about a month, this issue, and she really wanted to get over it, get it over and done with. So when I looked at her wrist, I, I mentioned that I look at the anatomy and the physiology. So I saw the inflamed tendons in her wrist, right? And I saw that um, that was obvious. There was pain there and red and heat. It looked very intense. But underneath the tendons, I saw what looked like a fracture that had healed. So there was a little scar in the bone, a little fracture in the bone that had healed. It looked old. And that's what I told her that I was seeing in the physical body. Now, when I look at life history, it's like watching a little movie of someone's life. And up popped this little scene that was right there in her wrist uh, from when she was about 20 years old and she was playing tennis with her boyfriend. She swung her racket, she tripped and fell, and broke her wrist. And that was where that fracture came from. Now, uh, the next thing her wrist showed me was a scene of her in the hospital with her boyfriend and her boyfriend breaking up with her right in the hospital room. So this is not untypical of how the body stores information. What the body had stored there was the physical pain of the physical fracture, but also the pain, the emotional pain of the heartbreak. Now, this was a wonderful thing for my client to hear because she immediately piped up now they don't usually people don't usually say things but she went oh my gosh I know she remembered that 20 year old scene and she said that um, her partner had broken up with her her current partner had broken up with her a month prior just before the tendonitis flared up now that's a one-to-one -one, right the earlier life experience created this flare of 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 tendonitis pain and all this stored emotion in her wrist. Again, that's something a medical intuitive would see. Now, what's interesting about this case and why I like to talk about it is that her wrist had more to show me. And what it showed me was an image of her at five years old, holding that same wrist up for protection. She was in what looked like a dark closet. I could see clothes all around her. And a cane was striking her right on that wrist wielded by a, a, an older woman. And it was painful and dramatic and traumatic. And what she said to me was, I know exactly what that is. She said, my mother was mentally ill. She used to beat me with her cane and lock me in a closet. I mean, horrible experience. But she had an, she had an understanding of what that meant. Now, on the physical side, that meant that her wrist was holding emotional, mental, and physical trauma all from five years old, you know, all up to the present. And that was an area of power, you know, powerful information for her. Now, I also love about this case study is that she remembered the, she remembered the, she knew what that one was. She knew the 21 year old was, and she made the connection to her current experience, which I, I can do as well. But when you think about it logically, it has no logical basis, right? It's the body's logic. And that's the, point of medical intuition the body has a logic to it that from our you know our mental left brain ideas sometimes don't fit so what what happened was uh, I look at the rest of the body and I ask what it needs and wants and she had some trouble sleeping and there was some you know high cortisol a lot of stress going on and 
two days later, she called me and she said the pain's gone completely. Uh, what happened for her was just hearing that information allowed her to start to process the emotions of her current breakup, which she was holding on to. She wasn't able to get through that. And that allowed for healing to occur. Now, that's wonderful when that happens. But you can see the premise here is that the body stores this information over time, and it can manifest in imbalances. And that's all of the research on adverse childhood experiences and early life trauma and all of that stuff right there in a nutshell, which is why I like to talk about that. That is an awesome story. And, and you, so with that, this woman, and rather than continuing, because she's obviously still fairly young, uh, you know, storing that kind of thing in her wrist and having serious trouble as she moves on, that releases her from that. This is something Mary, one of our really wise and anxious women here, um, was talking about earlier when she was saying that, you know, we we give our power away so much, um, you know, and, and that it really takes a lot of work for us to begin to put the pieces of ourselves back together again. Um, it's fascinating to hear that. And what a gift that you've given her. I mean, it's more than just, I, most of us go to the doctor and hope to come out with, you know, a, a bottle of, and this is half the problem. <laughs> Doctors do say that people come to them and that they don't feel they're listened to or heard unless they give them a prescription. And in fairness to the doctors, um, they're trying to do something else, but very often they meet a resistance because it's people feel they're not being properly heard. I have a lovely, I have a question from somebody. May I ask you that? From Sandra, Sandra says, oh my God, fascinating to hear. My friend lost her son and she started having heart trouble. And the doctor in the hospital was Chinese and he asked her if she had trauma that her heart was a broken heart heart she still needs help as she is in a bad place but that's interesting that the Chinese doctor asked her that well Chinese medicine is 5,000 years old and and Chinese medicine I, I teach a lot of acupuncturists for this reason uh, this is a it, it fits perfectly with the paradigm of Chinese medicine the idea that the body holds emotion stores it and that you know when you work with the meridians and Chinese medicine you're looking to move things so that they can process out I'm, I'm that may be simplifying it but um, yeah it makes sense well, on that, if I can ask you just very briefly, and then and and then um, I let you go. Um, the the story recently of uh, the sad, sad loss of of Tina Turner. Um, but one oh. thing that struck me about her was that she was very honest in the last uh, towards the end of her life, and said that she had uh, turned her back on her, you know, sort of Western medicine, um, and visited a homeopath, and she threw out all of her. Um, I think it was high blood pressure medication. And in taking the homeopathic remedies um, and not really, you know, staying with uh, her doctors, she ended up causing problems with her, her kidneys. And, and that's one of the things that has happened to her. Look, I suppose it's probably unfair asking you this question, but how do you strike a balance? I mean, some people are going, she was obviously told this was the way to go. Um, a woman with all the finances and all of the, you know, the, the, the the best in the world willing to treat her and yet this happened to her do you have any comment on that or is that I have a lot of comments on that <laughs> yeah. so as a medical intuitive I cannot have a bias and what does that mean that means a bias for or against any kind of healthcare process because if I do then I'm just like the doctor or I'm just like the homeopath or I'm just like any other practitioner out there looking through their lens medical intuition when it's used properly in my opinion it cannot have a bias it has to be the absence of bias and I'll tell you what the value of that is it is that um if there is medical procedures that save lives, right? If there is naturopathic opportunities that can help and, and really make a difference, homeopathic, Chinese medicine, anything. To me, it's on the same playing field because I have to look at it that way. It's what the body's asking for. And I have had many clients who are so wary of conventional medicine, understandably so, really understandably so. And pay, uh, clients who are wary of anything other than conventional medicine, understandably so. My job is to ask the body, what is it asking for? You know, is it, a, is it this or is it that? You know, I can't make a, a, a value judgment on any of it. And if I do, I'm doing my job wrong. 
Well, you've just given me an aha moment in that because I said to you earlier about how do you convince somebody who's very skeptical or or rather, you know, this is all too wooey uh, to come to you. In fact, they don't need to worry about it at all. You are literally translating the issue within their body and then the, the world is open to them and, and how, right. they, how they explore their own wellness or recovery or healing or whatever else because I think an awful lot of people have persistent problems and yeah. they may be continuing their treatment but in actual fact once they've spoken with you they find out the root cause you've had this you know experience of of seeing things through your own mind's eye they find out the root cause everything is open to them after that and it's so much more empowering um, well, it, it is it is the opposite of bias. And in my, you know, you, you were talking earlier about changing the paradigm. That in a nutshell is the paradigm that needs to change. Every form of healthcare, including energy practices, are incredibly tunnel visioned. <laughs> and I understand you want your specialist to be a specialist. You want them to have that skill set. But this is why I call medical intuition a foundational skill that can support any modality it can, from conventional to you know anything um and and that's why i love teaching it and in my classes we get people who are health coaches and nutritional counselors to you know very prominent medical doctors of all kinds so it runs the gamut because it can support that Wendy, you are an incredible breath of fresh air. You are absolutely, we, we, we like to think we have an open mind here in the, in the Tuesday Night Club, but my goodness, you've blown it away because it's, abs it's just fascinating. I know for a fact that we will, all of us go away and begin a whole new area of exploring. Um, and it's absolute, I mean, it's astounding. And, and you've enriched us all with what you've had to say. I certainly feel that I've learned so much. You've, you've actually, just blown away a number of, of sort of old ideas I've had and given us so many more things to say. I want to give, if anybody has something, I don't want to, to say goodbye to Wendy and, and thank you until I've given you an opportunity, guys, to say something. Well, Eileen has said, Wendy, please come back again. Absolutely wonderful <laughs> information. Thank you so much. We'll all be signing up on your Practical Path um, newsletter immediately and joining your Facebook page. Is there a practitioner in Ireland? In other words, does Wendy have a graduate in Ireland? Is that what you're asking? Um, in that question? I don't think I have at this point. We've got a lot of people from New Zealand and Australia, <laughs> wrong, wrong area, and a lot from the UK, um, mm -hmm. but not in Ireland. But remember that um, the, it's a time difference more than anything else, because this is a remote skill and any one of my graduates and myself can work with you over the phone or over Zoom, probably better. Um, however, with the time difference works. Yes, yeah. we, we've all had experience of time difference earlier and it's all my fault. Uh, Sandra said, thank you so much for opening our minds, Wendy. Absolutely fascinating. And that time went so fast. It did, didn't it? Even though, I mean, it, we're, we're moving in. It's quarter past eight here now. I imagine you're after midday where you are. Um, listen, we, we, we're going to learn so much more about you. So the book, just to remind everybody, please go out and get The Essentials of Medical Intuition. I don't know if it'll show up this way. Can you see it? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So guys. <laughs> Go get that. It's not an audible yet, Wendy. We have to. No, the publisher has to decide on whether they want to do that. But... <laughs> Okay, well, I can demand it. <laughs> Absolutely, we will do that because it's a wonderful way. It's so many of us, you know, we're out walking or driving or whatever else. And yours is the kind of thing that we want to hear so much more about. Okay, guys, I want to say, Wendy, I can't thank you enough for being so good as to come on and and, and uh, break your meeting short and come and see us. We're absolutely thrilled we met you. It was so worth seeing you and and um, and coming to, to us here. Guys, I am going to let you all go to enjoy the summer, the incredibly beautiful weather. And, and I hope you all stay really well. No more tripping over husbands, cats, or pajama bottoms, anybody. Um, <laughs> wishing you all lots and lots of love. And thank you so much for your company and your positivity and your contributions. And your, uh, you're just you're all so good to know. And we'll be in touch. I'll send you all of Wendy's details so that you can go and, and follow up on that. Um, so good luck, everybody. Have a wonderful summer. Wendy, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Take good care of yourself. And good luck Bye. with your Take care. Bye-bye. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.